Uh, Minister, I first of all want to refer you to the copy of the speech, your own speech, to the, your response to your own amendments and to the government amendments, sorry, to the opposition amendments uh, which are tabled. So, in response to the opposition amendments 1, 2, 6 and 11 to government amendment 55 and opposition amendment 1 to government amendment 68 and opposition amendments 58, 60, 63 and 64, if you have those notes in front of you, Minister, you will see that you say that this measure, and this is uh, government amendment 55, will give significant certainty to both landlords and tenants by allowing for reasonable growth in rents. Now, I don't know, Minister, uh, what reasonable means in your book, but for the vast majority of tenants, for the vast majority of families out there who have been subject to very high rent increases right across the state over the last number of years, 4% each and every year for the next three years is far from reasonable. It's unreasonable. And worse than that, it's unsustainable, Minister. They simply cannot sustain it. For all the reasons that have been said, I'm not going to rehearse all of those issues and the difficulties that families face, but it is certainly not reasonable. You then go on to say, Minister, and I think you are a decent politician, I think you are a decent minister, and I think you're a decent uh, person. But I do think that you have a bit of a brass neck, to be fair, to then go on to say that uh, this measure will prevent the instability and uncertainty caused by the volatility seen in recent years. Surely, Minister, you will take responsibility for the very instability and uncertainty in the private rented sector and indeed in the housing sector that you and your party and your policies created in the first place. The reason why we have volatility, the reason why we have instability, the reason, the reason why we have uncertainty is because, first and foremost, your government failed to build public housing and that has forced tens of thousands of people who should be getting roofs over their heads provided by the state as part of public housing, you force them into the private rented sector. And they are competing with renters and people who are in a position to rent and want to rent. And that is one of the primary drivers of rent increases over the last number of years. So it is not an accident. Minister, it is by design, it is by government policy that we have instability and that we have uh, uncertainty. And you and your party had to be dragged kicking and screaming even to accept that we had a problem, even to accept that there had to be a market intervention by the state and even to accept that we had a housing emergency. You had to be dragged kicking and screaming before the election and after the uh, election, uh, Minister. And I'm not talking... Uh, sorry? Yeah, well, I was chastised in the past. I don't actually mind being, being interrupted, uh, to be quite frank. Um, you also then go on to say, Minister, that uh, I do not believe that linking rent increases to CPI is an approach that serves the interests of landlords and tenants. Really, you should have put a full stop after landlords, because you cannot say that about uh, tenants, uh, Minister. Because are you telling me that tenants out there are going to favour 4% increases over the next three years, a 12% increase potentially, not for all of them, obviously, but for some, and some will be subject to that, that that is somehow better for them than linking this to uh, the uh, Consumer Price in Index, which would be a minimum of 0.7%. It will not serve the interests uh, of uh, tenants. Uh, it may serve the interests of, of landlords. And just to respond uh, as well to um, uh, Chuck to O'Dowd, who talked about the opposition being critical of, of landlords. I know many landlords. They're decent people. I have no difficulty in principle with people who rent out homes. I, have, I, I genuinely believe there are many decent landlords. There are many who are not. I'm not against to a private rented uh, sector as such, but I do believe the state has a role to play in providing public housing and social housing, and it has failed uh, in that regard. But that entirely misses the point. It entirely misses the point. Wanting reasonable rents, wanting affordability, is not saying that we are anti-landlord or that we are trying to squeeze landlords unfairly. That's not the point. This is all about trying to help struggling families uh, at this point uh, in time. Again, in your, your own uh, statement, uh, Minister, you say there is a need to ensure a reasonable rate of return on investment. And for me, that is the most significant thing that was said by you in this chamber today. 
there is a need to ensure a reasonable rate of return on investment. And for Fine Gael, that's what it's all about. It's about investment and investors. It's about protecting investors and not protecting tenants, not protecting families, not protecting ordinary working people. It's protecting those who have money. It's protecting a certain class. It's protecting the elites and not pro uh, uh, protecting ordinary uh, people. You say in your speech as well, Minister, and you talk about rent pressure zones. And we have a saying in Waterford, Minister, uh, call a spade a spade. And you may have forgotten that Waterford existed. It does exist. We have problems in Waterford as well. There are rent pressures in Waterford. It's not too far from Cork. You know where it is, Minister. It does exist. Families there have problems, the same as they have in Cork, the same as they have in, in uh, Dublin. But you talk about these rent pressure zones. The entire state, Minister, is a rent pressure zone. The entire state. And simply because they don't meet your benchmark and the criteria that you put in place does not mean that there is not rent pressure in all of the parts of our country. There are, and there are certainly are, uh, rent pressure problems in Cork or Waterford. But to go back to that Waterford phrase of calling a spade a spade, uh, Minister, the reason why that you have only designated a number of areas as zones is because you are ideologically opposed to market intervention that is in the interests of ordinary working people. That's really what this is about. You were forced into it, as I said, kicking and screaming. We have statements from the Taoiseach in the past and by others in government before the last election and since where you robustly argued against any market intervention. So you're on the record as saying you are opposed to it. So you have done a U-turn on the principle of it at least, and I welcome uh, that. But you are, you are dipping your toes into it. That's all you are doing because you are ideologically afraid of this type of intervention. You are ideologically opposed to this type of intervention, and that's why you have constructed the model that you uh, have. But the rent pressure zones, the pressure is on the people. The pressure is on families. And it has been said by others that families at the moment have a real problem with the cost of living. They're forced to take out private health insurance. Uh, they have taken huge cuts in pay over the last number of years. We have had all the cuts that people have had. We've had stealth taxes. Uh, any reasonable demands for pay restoration in the public sector or pay increases in the private sector are met with resistance from ministers who talk about wage restraint and so on. So you preach that to these families. That's the mantra from the government and has been the mantra from the government. But when it comes to increases for, in rents for landlords, that can be done no problem. And Dr O'Brien made the point already. You see, Minister, it isn't that you're afraid of market intervention. Your government and Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil have always intervened in the market, but you've intervened in the interests of developers, in the interests of builders, sometimes in the interests of landlords, but mainly in the interests of elites, of bankers and so on. We know that, and you know uh, that, Minister. And even before uh, you came into power with Fianna Fáil, before the Celtic Tiger, what did we have? We had all sorts of tax incentives put in place for builders to, to build as much as they wanted, to build uh, apartments and so on. That was market intervention, but it was market intervention for the wrong reasons and was part of why we have the crisis that we have uh, now, Minister. If I can just deal specifically with the issue of, of Waterford City and County, Minister, because um, it is now one of the areas where you're going to look at speeding up the process that may or may not allow uh, Waterford City to become one of these uh, rent pressure zones. This is going to be a real uh, Hobson's choice for uh, renters in uh, Waterford. And I, I would imagine they're trying to figure out what's going to be best for them. Because they have been faced with 12% uh, increases in, in rent. Uh, they are now going to be faced with the prospect of being included in the government scheme, which will guarantee rent increases of 4%. But what they are not going to get is affordability. They are not going to get the certainty, certainty that they want. They're going to be forced between the, what's, maybe what's going to happen in the market and potential uh, increases which ha have been high on the one hand and then the government's guaranteed increases of 12% on the other hand. So they are stuck between a rock and a hard place and they will be struggling to understand actually is this going to be good or bad for us and I don't know how to advise them uh, on uh, that minister but one thing is for certain, they will not be better off and they will not be protected, and they will not get the benefits that they need, because your, uh, 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 your, your policy, in my view, uh, is um, fundamentally uh, flawed. 
In my view, Minister, this is uh, a landlord uh, charter. Uh, it is not going to be in the interests of, of ordinary uh, families. Uh, I would concur uh, completely with my uh, colleague when he talked about the absolute farce that we witnessed over the last 48 hours. And I have to say this to you, Minister, because I genuinely believe that, uh, as I said, you were a decent person. But you will understand, I'm sure you understand, that the last 48 hours and the way that Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael handled this issue has been an absolute farce, has been a joke, and has really damaged politics, and has shown people and laid bare the absolute farce that is this so-called new politics. It was a game of one-upmanship between Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael. That's what it was, a game of one-upmanship, and the victims in that were people who are struggling with rents. And they were the ones that had to sit back and watch that game unfold over the last 48 hours. And I agree with uh, my colleague when he asks where Deputy Cowan is. Because he made himself available to every media outlet over the last number of days to give Fianna Fáil's position on this. He was forced into a humiliating, in my view, a humiliating climb down, as were the Fianna Fáil uh, party. And that's because they put themselves in that position. But they were forced into a humiliating uh, climb down on the issue. And they are not here. None of them have spoken. I don't know if any of them even intend to speak here at uh, uh, report stage uh, today. They've gone mute all of a sudden on the issue of rents. And yet they were jumping up and down over the last uh, number of uh, days. So they have done a huge disservice to themselves, a huge disservice to politics, and a huge disservice to those people right across the state who are suffering uh, at the moment. So I'm afraid, Minister, um, this has been very very bad and, 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 and the last point I'll make is this. It goes back to what Chuck O'Dowd was saying earlier about when he said that the opposition are wrong. And how many times have we heard that from Fine Gael? The opposition are wrong. I heard it with, and he was a minister at the time, a former minister in relation to water charges. I was one of those in the Shannon who spent 14 hours debating the water services bill Mark 1 only to have to debate Water Services Mark 2, Water Services Mark 3, Water Services Mark 4, and we're going to get more Water Service bills because you still haven't finished making a mess of that particular issue. And I have no doubt, Minister, that you will be back with your tail between your legs on this issue with a bill Mark 2 or Mark 3 because this is fundamentally flawed. It will not work. It will not provide the affordability the tenants need. It will not deal with the pressures which are on families that will quickly become uh, apparent. And I have no doubt that you will be back again. Uh, and unfortunately for many of the families that I represent, Minister, it will be too late. Good morning.